after the Rutherford's atomic model, another new atomic model has been proposed by Niels Bohr in 1930. According to Bohr, he given some postulates regarding the structure of an atom. According to Niels Bohr, the electrons are revolving around the nucleus in the circular paths, so like this. So electrons are revolving around the nucleus in the circular paths. These circular paths are called as stationary orbits. And also, these can also be called as energy levels. So, Niels Bohr given names to each orbit. And these names were given in different types. So, the first orbit of an atom is called as, that means first orbit which is closer to the nucleus is called as glacial and the second orbit from the nucleus is called as L shell. Third orbit from the nucleus is called as M shell. Fourth one is called as N shell. If we have fifth one, it will be called as O shell like that. M, K, L, M, N, O, P like that. He has given names. And this can also be named as N is equals to 1. That means N is equals to 1 means it is denoted for first shell. N is equals to 2 means it is denoted, it is denoted for second shell. N is equals to 3 means it is denoted for third shell. N is equals to 4 means it is denoted for fourth shell. Like that. If we have fifth shell, it can also be called as N is equals to 5. And these are also denoted as E1, E2, E3 and E4. Because these shells are also called as energy levels. That's why the names also given as E1, E2, E3, E4. E1 means first energy level. E2 means second energy level. E3 means third energy level. Like that. So he has given names to the orbits in different types. And also Bohr stated that electrons are revolving around the nucleus. Are these electrons continuously revolving in the same orbit? No. So the electrons which are revolving in lower shells, that means which are closer to nucleus, the electrons which are revolving in the lower shells, they will jump to higher shells, that means upper shells. And some electrons which are revolving in upper shells, they can jump to lower shells. When this will happen? And here Bohr stated that each energy level has some specific energy. That means the first energy level has some specific energy. And the second level, second energy level, that is E2 or L shell, it, it has more energy than K shell. M shell has more energy than these two shells. N shell has more energy than these three shells. That means each stationary shell has a specific energy. Uh, uh, same like that, the electrons present in the orbits can also have some specific energy. That means the electron present in K shell has less energy and the electron present in N shell has more energy. So when an electron will jump from one, one orbit to another orbit. For example, the electron present in K shell, it has very low energy. If it has to jump to upper shell, it has to gain energy. That means when an electron from lower shell gains energy, it will jump to the upper shell. Same like that, an electron in upper shell, when it loses energy, it will jump to lower shell. So like this, electron, electron just doesn't revolve in uh, any specific shell continuously. Sometimes it will jump from lower shell to upper shell. Sometimes it will jump to upper shell to lower shell. So when an electron jumping from lower shell to upper shell, it has to gain energy. When an electron jumping from upper shell to lower shell, it has to lose energy. So like this, under these energy, 
the electrons which will release while jumping from one shell to another, another shell, this energy is in the form of packets. And this is explained again by quantum theory, which is derived by Mr. Max Planck. We we'll discuss it later in another class. And now, in this Bohr's atomic model, so he, according to these postulates, Niels Bohr tried to explain the structure of hydrogen atom and he successfully explained the structure of hydrogen atom. You know that hydrogen has only one electron in its atom. So he successfully explained the structure of hydrogen atom. But the main effect of this Bohr's atomic model is he unable to explain the structures of different atoms. Remaining atoms, that means the atoms have more electrons. He unable to explain the structures of atoms having more electrons. So, Bohr's atomic model is applicable for only hydrogen atom. And here, one more defect he identified. That means, when the hydrogen atom, when the spectrum of hydrogen atom is observed in highly res high resolution spectroscope, the spectral line has been splitting into so many lines. So he unable to explain why the spectral line of hydrogen is splitting into so many spectral lines. So this is these are the main defects of Bohr's atomic model. And here we have to know two more important topics. That is one. An atom, when the spectroscope is observing a high magnetic field, if the spectral lines are dividing into so many, that means if the spectral lines are splitting in high, highly, that means very powerful magnetic field, this division, this phenomenon is called as Zeeman effect. And when an atom that when the spectros when the spectros when the spectral line is dividing in the electric field that means if we place an atom in the electric field if it divides into so many different spectral lines in presence of strong electric field this phenomenon is called as stock effect so zeeman effect stock effect what is zeeman effect so once again we repeat these two Zeeman, is, Zeeman effect is the splitting of spectral lines in presence of very powerful magnetic field. Stark effect is splitting of spectral lines in presence of very powerful electrical field. So these are the main things that we have to remember according to Bohr's atomic model. In the next class, we discuss about Bohr's Sommerfeld atomic model.